Howdy, this here's Paul, and we're fixing to have us another little Sunday school lesson. Today's lesson is titled, Jesus', Jesus Arrest. And that text is out of John 18, 1 through 13. And these related scriptures is John 11, 45 through 53, Matthew 26, 36 through 57, Mark 14, 26 through 50, Luke 22, 39 through 53. And I'm going to pray and then I'm going to read the text and I'm going to try to expound on it just a little bit here. Uh, Lord God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for your word, Lord God, and we thank you for our salvation. Lord, we just pray that uh, you lead and guide us, Lord, and we pray that this word falls on good ground summers, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that uh, uh, you put the words in my mouth and, and I just just give them what you tell me to give them, Lord. And uh, it's all about you. Lord God, we pray for all the sick and afflicted, Lord God. We pray for healing to come to folks' bodies. We pray for the prodigals to come to salvation, Lord. We pray they come back home, Lord. We're ready and waiting on them, Lord. We just pray, Lord God, that you would lead and guide us and, and, and the words we have for them. Give us wisdom, Lord God. And Lord God, we pray for uh, we pray for our country, Lord God, and and we pray, we we pray for everybody, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Now, like I said, today's lesson is called Jesus' Arrest, and that text is John eighteen one through thirteen. Let me go read it right here. John eighteen one and following. When Je Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook of Cedron, where was a garden into which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. Ju Judas, then having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither, with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto him, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Jesus also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon as they had said unto him, I am excuse me, as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these others, uh, let these go their way, that the saying might be filled which he spake of them which thou gavest me, I have lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Then the band, and the captain, and the officers, of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas first for he was the father-in-law to Caiaphas which was the high priest that same year. Now these, all them related scriptures gives a different account of uh, Jesus' arrest and it behooves you to go back there and read all that stuff, because I can tell every week when you read read them related scriptures. Now that's going to give the story foundation. Uh, it gives it legs, uh, and, and it puts everything into context. And and as we all know, context rules. And if you ever in doubt about context rules, just go back to see rule number one. <clears throat> all right here. Now, have you ever been betrayed by a close friend? Few things hurt emotionally as much as when a friend or loved one turns their back on you and, and uses personal information to hurt you. 
Unfortunately, acts of betrayal are committed by Christians and non-Christians alike. Now, if you're still reeling from a close friend's betrayal, then this week's lesson will be of special interest to you. Jesus also was betrayed by a close companion, and he understands how you feel. Judas Iscariot's betrayal of Jesus led to the arrest, trial, and crucifixion of the only completely innocent man to ever live. Now, Judas had sold Jesus out to the chief priest for 30 pieces of silver. That's Matthew 26, 15. And he waited for the opportune time to deliver him to the authorities. This was a despicable act of treachery that exposed Judas for the scoundrel that he was. Now, today... We aim to know that Jesus was never guilty of any sin or wrongdoing, yet he was arrested when Judas Iscariot betrayed him. And we need to recognize that Jesus willingly bore our sin to note that he understands the pain that betrayal brings. And we should always stand for Christ, even if it's unpopular with those closest to us especially if it's unpopular. Now, Jesus had just completed his high priestly prayer and crossed over the Kidron Valley after exiting Jerusalem, and there he entered the Garden of Gethsemane. <clears throat> That's Mark 13, uh, excuse me, 1432. As Jesus agonized in prayer over what he was about to endure, a band of soldiers came with torches and weapons to arrest him, uh, what the disciples may have found astonishing was who was leading them. And just as Jesus had predicted, it was one of their own. It didn't surprise Jesus. He had already told them he was going to do it. Remember back up in the uh, upper room. Now, the Kidron Valley was located just east of Jerusalem between the city and the Mount of Olives where the Garden of Gethsemane was. And this was a familiar place for Jesus, as he often took his disciples there to pray. Pray, You know, they, they was there regularly. Uh, Jesus knew, or excuse me, Judas knew that Jesus could be found there, as he had undoubtedly spent a significant amount of time there with him. Jesus took specific inside information that he had of Jesus and used it against him. Now, we all have probably suffered this from someone or somebody in our life. Uh, so Jesus knows how you feel to be attacked. Now, attacking a devout man while he is in prayer is repulsive, but Judas' conscience was seared at this point because Satan had entered into him, and that's Luke 22, 3. Seizing a praying man was not a problem for Judas. All he cared about was them 30 pieces of silver. He wanted to f fill his coffers. And Judas did not come along to Gethsemane. He brought along a band of Roman soldiers and Jewish officers. They had come to arrest Jesus, and the soldiers may have also been present to prevent a potential riot. Remember, they thought Jesus was there to cast off the Roman rule. But Jesus was going to do far more than that. He was going to free all of us, not just the Jews from the Romans. He was going to free the world. Uh, but we have to let him. We have to allow that. We, we have to accept that he done that. Jesus knew in advance everything that was going to happen to him. And he asked who they were looking for, and they answered that they were looking for Jesus and Nazareth. Their intentions were now clearly on record. Standing with the soldiers and officers was Judas, who notably had switched sides. Once a follower of Jesus, he was now standing, even leading those who had arrested and killed Jesus. While this visible but the portrayal of betrayal and switching sides would be surprising. In reality, 
Jesus never really stood with Jesus at all. When Jesus answered, I am he, the soldiers fell backward to the ground. More seems to be going on here than just simple surprise at Jesus' direct answer. Whether or not they perceived who they were actually dealing with, it seems that at his moment of greatest human weakness, his power was evident in a remarkable way. Jesus asked them again who, were, who, who they were seeking, and they again said they were looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus responded by saying that he had already told them that he was the one they were looking for. This time he told the rest of the officers to let the others go since they had twice said that they sought him alone. Even while facing the rest, the shepherd protected his sheep. That's astounding. This fulfilled what Jesus had said earlier, that he kept all those whom the Father had given him back in John 17, 12. Peter reacted with a violent, desperate attempt to protect Jesus and cut off the ear of the high priest's servants. Now, for years and years, I thought, wow, he cut off his ear. He was aiming for his head. He was aiming to kill this man. Just so happened, he just got his ear. The guy may have moved his head at, at just the right time. But even so, Jesus fixed it. Jesus, the, the word says Jesus replaced the ear. Uh, this may have been how many of us would have reacted. I know that's probably how I would have reacted. But it was not part of God's plan. Peter's response was to cut off the man's ear. Jesus' response, however, was to heal the man immediately. And that's in Luke 22, 50 and 51. Jesus rebuked Peter by telling him to put his sword away. Jesus had to drink the cup the Father had prepared for him, and he had no desire to prevent it from happening. In the Old Testament, the cup is sometimes used as a metaphor for God's wrath. Uh, uh, examples, uh, Job 21, 20, Psalm 75a, uh, Jeremiah 25, 15 through 17. But Jesus here is ready to take the cup prepared by the Father so that he will not need to. The soldiers arrested Jesus and tied him up, treating him like a common criminal. No one had ever laid hands on Jesus like this before. Many attempts were made by Satan and sinners alike to kill Jesus in the past, but all of them were unsuccessful. Now his uh, time to die had come. They immediately led Jesus to Annas, the father-in-law of the high priest Caiaphas. Annas had previously served as high priest, and he still wielded con considerable power. One way to stand with Jesus is to proclaim his name even when our friends do not like him. I remember uh, peer pressure kept me from uh, 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 saying anything about Jesus because I didn't want to be seen as a Jesus freak. And now that's my biggest uh, plan is I want people to be, I want to be known as a Jesus freak. I want them to know that I love Jesus beyond anything else. And I want to, I want to uh, be in heaven with him. And that's the reason we, we try to live like we live now. We need to live now like we're going to live in heaven. Well, Jesus' true colors stood out clearly as he stood with Jesus' enemies. In his most trying hour, if we're going to be true disciples of Christ, then we must stand with him no matter who is against him. And this may make you unpopular and in some circumstances may even put you in danger. However, those of us who love Jesus will never abandon him under any circumstance. You just got to stay with him. 
because they ain't nothing else. He is what's coming. He's what's been with us all the time. He knew us before the foundations of the earth. And, and he knew us way back there in Genesis 3.15 when God prophesied that he was going to bring somebody to, 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 to bring back the innocence that was lost in the garden. That innocence was Jesus Christ. I pray today that if you ain't saved, you, you, you get saved. I pray that y'all are uh, uh, going to find some information here that pulls on your heartstrings. I, I pray for salvation to come for more people, and I pray, Lord God, for all the prodigal sons to be coming home, Lord God. Uh, we pray, Lord God, for the time uh, uh, that we get to come home and be with you, Lord God. Uh, that is our entire uh, direction. That's all we care about. Uh, we pray uh, for all the sick and afflicted, Lord God, and we pray for more souls to the kingdom, Heavenly Father. And, Lord God, we just, we just pray uh, uh, that you would lead and guide us, Lord God. Uh, in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen.